Are we starting? I think we started. Take it away, Ted. All right. Hi, welcome to Potentially Genius, where we, Tomorrow Lab, take what is probably a potentially genius idea and turn it into more of a potentially genius thing. We're gonna do this all in just 16 hours of studio time, which is way faster than our usual process. Normally our projects take hundreds or thousands of hours. So this is gonna be super fast, really accelerated. It's more of a race against time to see how real we can make something in the shortest amount of time possible. We have a four phase process to do this. We start with discovery, then we go into ideation, followed by prototyping, and then a final presentation to our potential genius. So let's get into it. My name is Sean. I'm a filmmaker and a musician. I live in Bushwick. In my spare time since COVID started, I've uh, re-picked up the art of rollerblading. I mean, I grew up watching the movie Hackers, so I think a part of me always <laughs> wanted to be on rollerblades in New York City. Hack the planet. Hack I came up with an idea while skating, which I, like, I don't like using a brake. I can get around pretty well without it, but when I get to the Williamsburg Bridge specifically, I would probably take my uh, skates off to walk down just because you'd go way too fast and it's hard to speed check. The idea is to create a braking mechanism within like an inline skate frame. So that way you wouldn't be wearing like the big brake on the back. How do you stop right now? There's a couple of different forms. One's more of like a figure skating T-stop, like one skate and you kind of like drag your feet. The really good inliners can like slide across the ground like that. But then if you have the brake on you, you're typically just dragging one foot up, which also, if you're going really fast downhill, you're like, you're taking a lot of your uh, core balance off one foot, which could also lead to an accident. I mean, it, it's kind of, it's been the way it's been for, I think technically inline skating dates back to like the 1890s or early 1910s. Oh, what's old is new. And still dangerous. <laughs> it sounds like a real drawback to inline skates is you make your way up the bridge and then the fun part of course like on a bicycle is going down the other side if you have to take your boots off that sounds like a real hassle if you had a remote control brake would you be able to skate down the back side of that bridge more comfortably definitely 100 percent. so this really feels like a electro mechanical project so i think we should have a pair of mechanical engineers and a pair of electrical engineers. I'm really excited to work on this potentially genius idea with the uh, three of you guys. I can't wait to be a test subject. The design brief is to work within the space of the existing inline skate and use a lot of off-the-shelf components. In terms of an interaction, it should be something really intuitive. So we're going to explore different ways of interacting with the brake remote. Yeah, well, we still need to figure out how to brake. Very important. We need to choose some electronic components that we can buy from DigiKey. Jackson's point about the max braking force limit so that we don't hurt anyone. Here we go. So I have three concepts. First being the one on top. So it's sort of like two little arm that has a brake pad that breaks into the front wheel and the back wheel. And I have a second concept, which also occupies the middle wheel, which is sort of a scissor lift mechanism that utilizes one motor to extend symmetrically through the center to break on both wheel again. Or the third one, a motor actuated fuel brake, which still satisfied the uh, request of not having to tip your foot when braking. The first idea is like there's a remote control where you can drive a motor back and forth. That would either be controlled by Bluetooth or, or some type of 300 megahertz. And then I looked at two frames, either the three wheel or the four wheel and kind of came up with two concepts, either a new frame or a new wheel. In the new frame, this is a concept where we brake on the center wheel using some type of like worm drive or lead screw with a sliding threaded plate that engages with the rocking braking pad. In the second concept, which is a little bit more advanced, I started with like the four wheel frame. And so the idea is you take out the wheel that's under the most amount of weight under the foot 
and replace that with this cassette. So these would have two wheels that are constantly engaged with the wheels on the sides, kind of similar to Jackson's drawing. And I think this is kind of like adventurous and cool in two ways. One, these would always be engaged and so you could use it to actually power like LEDs that are in there and charge a battery. But then using the remote, you would energize the motor to resist the turning of those gears um, and sort of applying braking force that way. And then Dorian, I think on the electronics front, there's kind of two things we need to figure out. One is what's the control system, the wireless control system, and then also the motor control. I think we need to figure out how much force is needed to stop a person the size of the motor and what type of motor we want. Oh, now we got to do physics? Hey, all my Isaac Newton loving party people, some high school kinematics for you. You got a block, it weighs a mass M. It's going forward at a velocity VI, that's our initial velocity. We have gravity pulling down on it, so that's the acceleration G. And we've got this coefficient of friction, which is mu K. Our kinetic friction, we're just gonna guess that this is a rubber block and this is an asphalt road. And when it's sliding, that's usually about 0.5. Okay, it's probably something different, but I think it's a fine assumption. Now, to find our stopping distance, we're going to use two classic equations. Here we've got our kinetic energy equation, which is the kinetic energy of our block is one half times the mass times velocity square. And then we also know that the work done by the braking is equal to the force of the braking times the distance, right? And we can equate that energy and that work. And so the work here is mu k, times the mass, times the acceleration of gravity, times the distance. We can solve for the distance to get this equation. Velocity squared is divided by two times mu k times g. So if we had a 200 pound person going 50 miles an hour and they just slid on some rubber blocks, controlled stop, our equation tells us that they would stop in 4.5 meters. So if we solve, in this case, for the force of braking, we find that it needs to be 135 newtons in order to stop in 30 meters. So now that we know how much force is needed to stop the skates uh, and how much space we have for the electrical components, uh, we can start ordering the remaining electrical components. What we have listed so far is the Arduino MCU and servo, which we have in the shop. And then what we're going to order from DigiKey is um, a 5 volt output buck to convert the 7 volt battery to 5 volts for all the remaining electronics, um, a ring LED, and then the RF remote and receiver. And then once we get all those components, we can start prototyping. Dorian made me a thing. Should I hold it up? It's in a bag. Yeah, so I built you an uh, Arduino circuit that drives the servo using a potentiometer. So you can rotate the potentiometer as much as you want, and then it'll rotate it to the servo to that position. Jackson, you sourced us some frames. Look at this. Yeah, look, look at this, this bat boy. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> like like they zoom. Look, it's still going. It's still going. It's still spinning. It's still spinning. It's still spinning. It's still spinning. If only there was a break. And then Jackson and I were having a debate about where to apply the brake. Should we get into that? We're pretty generally set that we want to replace one of the middle wheels with the braking system. Where on the adjacent wheels do we hit? Mm -hmm. Everything's going this way and the wheels are spinning this way. Right. Do we want to drag something here mm -hmm. or do we want to jam something here? And I'm sure if we talk to like a good brake designer, they'd be like, you never jam or you never drag or whatever it is, but we have to sort of guess. So this is our servo. We give it some arms, right? The arm could be pulling on an extension spring. And then we would probably have some kind of lighter spring return force that just pulls this off of the wheel when the thing's not engaged. It would be kind of nice to have just two screws that go through there that hold it in place. And then we need something to just keep it from rotating. Yeah, I think as a priority, um, I want to figure out a way to securely mount our servo to our frame. It's, that's a number one, because if that can happen, nothing will happen. <laughs> hey, last week we talked about stepper motors and servos, how to fit them in the boot. Um, what's new? We've been really busy. Jackson and I have put together uh, a whole plan for how to lay out a servo inside uh, of our envelope. Jackson modeled up inline skate frame 
And uh, we found that, you know, this space right here, as we discussed between the second and fourth wheel, this is what we're gonna use to fit our brake in. Then we landed on uh, this size servo right wow. here. And we found some of these Savox servos in stock at Tomorrow Lab. Um, and they're waterproof and they're torquey. They have half the torque that we think we need, but that's okay because we're gonna use leverage to get all the way there. It's a classic clamshell design. I'm not gonna put all the guts in there. There's gonna be like a lever and this like little spring thing we're gonna talk about in a minute. But uh, you take your servo, you pop your servo inside, you close this bad boy up like this. Now it's a clamshell. Next version is gonna have some screws that hold it together. And then it installs like this. So you've got this little gap here. See this like little frame shape on the inside? And then you get these channels. See how there's like a channel here and a channel here? So it slides in like this, and then it slides like this, and it catches this little rib here so it can't come out. And then to really hold it in place, we've got this little guy that slides in from this direction. Whoop! Nice. Crazy. And now it's like super in there. And then what about the servo wires? Yeah, so right now there's terrible wire routing because it comes out on the bottom <laughs> and it looks just like a meow. Uh, <laughs> so we're gonna have the wires route out and then I think come out this hole right here for you, Dorian. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna create a peripheral housing. I think Jackson, that should be your next job is to create the light and PCB. Mm -hmm. I can give you guys a quick view of the CAD. We've got our frame in there, which is clean CAD because Jackson did it. Um, and then this is our little box. And there we go. So that's what we got inside. When the servo pulls back, it's gonna pull on this yellow lever arm, which is gonna hit our wheel. And then what's interesting is right here, we have an extension spring inside a piston. And so what'll happen is when this hits the wheel, the extension spring is preloaded, so it'll hit with a certain amount of force. And then as this increases, it'll increase the amount of force. And this lever arm will stop moving because it'll be against the wheel. And that's to kind of prevent the servo from getting damaged in case it presses too hard against the wheel. Yes, and also the other way, which is it's a good way to limit our brake power so that we don't immediately bind up our system. So we're totally over budget on time right now. You know, this is our first time doing a potentially genius episode. We set ourselves uh, with a 16 hour limit for work. We come right up to that, but we want to just sort of push this and make it a lot better. I have a bunch more work to get this mechanism crispy. Um, we know that there's the potential to create some genius lighting effects on the back of this. Two weeks from now, we present to Sean. We got to go from this kind of janky thing to something that works and lights up and uh, stops people from going downhill too fast. <laughs>
All right. We can start spinning the wheel. Ah. Uh, and the brake light is on. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a celebration animation. Yay. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, that's sweet. And I'm just, I'm completely blown away. That's, I don't even know what to say. Like, that's... <laughs> Jackson, do they work? They do work. Now I've only used the office as the testing field because um, it's been raining outside and I really didn't want to hurt myself. Um, <laughs> but once you hit the second stage of braking, you can feel significant stopping power around Sean, you know that cruising speed where you're relaxing mm -hmm. you will feel the resistance it will give you like a speed limit cap right there so the remote came with our receiver so we just attached that to uh, a small microcontroller with the microcontroller we were able to see which button was pressed uh, so we can change one of uh, we can change between one of the three modes so we got cruising which is when the brake is not like, touching the wheel at all half brake which is like when you don't want to fully stop just yet and the last one is full brake which is where the servo and the brake is fully engaged with the wheel i mean it's like it's not it's not like nothing like i pictured it but it's everything what i wanted i think it's genius <laughs> we did it <laughs> I mean, I, to, but to be honest, like the sketches were already genius. Like hearing you guys speak about it was already very impressive to watch it, uh, to see where it is now. It's like, yeah, it's, it's beyond genius. Dear Rollerblade, we created this amazing, uh, hold on. Rollerblade, we have a great idea that we'd love to run past you. We'd love to sit down and talk to you about it. It's a potentially genius idea. It won't be a waste of your time. We love you. Thanks for watching the first Potentially Genius. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also let us know what you'd want to see in future sessions and future videos. Rollerblade, I'm going to slide into your DMs.